Just a few minutes ago, Darren was making a comment about how if you have soil pH in that kind of mid sixes range, that's about ideal for microbial life. Well, today we're gonna to talk a little about fall tiling and I want you to think, rather than drainage here for a second, think about air in the soil. If you don't have air in the soil and abundant air in the soil, you will also not have good microbial life. If you want a healthy soil, I can promise you, you will not have that if you have poor drainage. You have to have good drainage because that allows air to be in the soil, which is great for roots, it's great for microbes, it's great for crops, and it's great for your pocketbook. In addition to not filling every pore in the soil with water and having oxygen in there for soil health, I look at compaction too. Over the last couple of years, much of the country has seen either way too dry at times, but way too wet at many times as well. And we saw so much compaction the last couple of years. Once you do that, you really restrict root growth and you restrict what those soil microbes can do as well. They're just not going to get the air movement down deeper into the soil like they would if you had good soil tilth. So if you went to college or a technical school or you know what, even in high school, if you had a soils class, the first thing they probably taught you was ideal soil compositions, 50% dirt, 25% water, and 25% air. By putting drain tile in the ground, all we're doing is lowering the water table so your soil can still have the 25% air that it needs. So today, what we wanted to focus on here is the number one question we typically get from farmers who are tiling in the fall, and they say, how close together should my tile lines be? I mentioned over the last couple of years there have been some pretty wet areas out there and maybe on your farm you saw the same thing. Maybe even had a pattern tiled field. I had a number of farmers in Minnesota with pattern tile who sent me pictures and said what's going on in my field and you could see exactly where those tile lines were on a hundred foot spacings and it was dark green. And in between those dark green lines every hundred feet through the field there was yellow crop because there was water sitting the lines weren't close enough together. Where some of those same farmers had split lines down to 50 foot tile spacing, they were still noticing some yellow spots in between, but it was less spots out in the field. And so for those farmers, they said, you know, every spot where there's those yellow areas of the field, I'm gonna add a little more tile out there. Now it's one thing when you've got existing tile in the field to be able to add some more lines to it. If you're starting from scratch though, it may be difficult if nobody in your area has done tiling to know exactly where to start. All right, there are a few basic concepts that we'll give you. First of all, the deeper the tile lines, the farther apart technically you could have those tile lines. So back in the old days, people would dig the lines really deep. On our farm even, we have found a few lines that are six or seven feet down in the ground. And you go, what in the world's going on here? Why are they six or seven feet down in the ground? Well, think about when they got put in. Back in the depression era or even before that, we didn't have a lot of money, but we had lots of labor. So people would go out, they would hand dig going down six or seven feet in the ground and lay these tile lines down. But they didn't have money for the tile, so they thought, you know what, let's put them extra deep. That will give us more drainage going further out. The downside is now we have lowered the water table more. Well, we farm in dryland, South Dakota. There are many years we only get 15 or 20 inches of total annual precipitation, and that includes the snow. So the point is, I don't want to lower my water table to six feet, or in most cases, even to four feet. I would like my water table at two and a half to three feet, something like that. So if I have my tile line set at three feet, well, in between, the water table's probably at two and a half feet, something like that. But the point is, if I'm going to set my tile lines shallow, then I need them a little closer together to achieve the same amount of drainage. Now, many drainage contractors in your area or other farmers who have already been putting in some tile can give you a good idea of what they've had good luck with out there for spacing. But I would just say this, whatever spacing you start with, let's say that it's 60 foot spacing in your area, make sure you set that plan up or you could always add more tile in. If you have tile lines just running willy nilly all through the field, it's really hard to add a line in between. But now with GPS, where we're mapping out exactly where those lines are, if we're running fairly straight lines or a consistent pattern, it's a lot easier to add more tile in later if we learn that we need it. Well, it is if your main lines are big enough. So you have a couple different ways to go here. First of all, you could say, all right, what's my dream scenario? How much could I possibly take out of this field? How close together could I possibly want these tile lines? We'll set the mains up for that. 
or you could say, you know what, I'm going to divide this up into multiple main lines. We call them sub-mains typically. So let's say I had a 160 acre field. Instead of just having one big main line for the whole 160 acres, maybe I have four sub-mains that are out there. So then I've got things just at least a little bit different and maybe in the future, if I haven't properly sized things, I only have a little bit to replace rather than everything to replace. Plus I could have those four sub-mains tie into one really huge main at the end and maybe it does save me some net total dollars because my huge main doesn't have to be quite so long. So there are a lot of different ways to design this thing. The main thing to keep in mind is just keep the water running downhill and you're going to be fine. But like Darren said, you can always add on later if you've got this GPS mapped. And just to talk about that real quick, so in the last 15 years now, we have seen this mapping thing and GPS and all that technology just explode. Farmers used to have to put tile in or tile contractors used to have to put it in using lasers. And that was really challenging. Well, today we're using sub-inch accurate GPS. So in other words, GPS that's literally right out in the field with base stations. So we're connecting with the satellites and with the base stations, sub-inch accuracy, it's awesome. And then because of that too, we're able to map everything with GPS. So it's tremendously helpful when you do want to go add things later. And one other thing you may want to take care of while you're out in those fields is our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up next.